This is kind of a follow-up to the upper back tier list video I did that everybody loved where I put pull-ups as C tier. Now to be clear, I was only ranking effective movements, so C tier meant pretty good, you're gonna grow from it, it's certainly a viable exercise, but there's limitations that other variations don't have. Like I don't love the fact that you have to fight swinging around as you fatigue, and I really don't like the fact that you have to be very strong already to be able to clock a lot of volume with pull-ups. Now that last one is a big one. There is a big barrier to entry. To do a very standard protocol, like three sets of six or eight, you have to be able to do double digit pull-ups fresh from the start, and most people just can't do that starting out. So it begs the question, what do you do to develop your upper back and your pulling strength if you cannot do pull-ups or at least do them very well. If your answer to this is do pull-ups, please go to the nearest DMV and turn in your driver's license. You are not fit to operate heavy machinery. Here's the thing, guys. The biggest backs on the planet do not belong to calisthenic athletes. That is silly. People have a really big problem differentiating between incredible muscular growth and somebody just being very, very lean. Somebody with virtually no muscle will still look quote unquote big if they have sufficiently low body fat. And that's because we live in an era where like 60% of the United States is technically obese. We are blown away when we see somebody who is not covered by several inches of marbled blubber. Being a calisthenic athlete requires a high strength to body weight ratio, so they are going to have low body fat. Some of them will have bigger upper backs, but a lot of them really don't. And none of them have upper backs that are even in the same universe as a typical IFBB pro bodybuilder or an elite level powerlifter or strongman. Larry Wheels is a great example. He's doing a bunch of calisthenic bullshit right now, doing muscle ups without breaking a sweat. Did he get his back that way doing pull-ups or was it from doing heavy ass rows and deadlifts for the last 15 years? Furthermore, I'll use myself as an example. People think that I was coping, like you ranked pull-ups low because you suck at pull-ups. Guys, I've been doing strongman for 20 years and I don't wanna blow smoke, but I'm pretty good. For the last two decades, pulling things to my body has basically been my profession. Barbells, stones, logs, your mom. And around the time I was regularly competing as a heavyweight, I was walking around at 265 and I could knock off 15 dead hang pull-ups getting my chin over the bar on each one. Wow, that's pretty good. You must have just spam pull-ups to get that insane pulling power. Actually, no, I didn't do any pull-ups whatsoever. I fucking hated pull-ups. Early on, I just did a shit ton of bent rows and various dumbbell and machine work. And as I got better at strongman movements, my upper back got really big. And as it got bigger, my ability to pull my fat ass to the bar also went up. If it can work for me, it can work for you. Now, yes, you can do like pull-up regressions. You can use bands or do negatives or isometric holds. Those can work, but there's no case to be made that they're somehow easier, faster, or yield better results than using just about any other exercise that is available to you in the gym. I mean, the fact is, if it was viable to start with the weight that's too damn heavy and then rig up a bunch of bullshit to make it manageable until you get strong enough to do that weight for one clean rep, people would be doing that. You would see that somewhere in the world of strength sports and it doesn't exist anywhere. The basics for getting stronger, find good movements that you can use through a full range of motion where you can demonstrate control while lifting explosively and with great effort and where you can scale the weight up steadily over time. That is the crux of all strength training and we're gonna go down line by line what you should do, in my opinion, that's gonna get you to that pull up faster. But first, a word from our sponsor, Base Strength AI. You guys know what it's like when you hit that brick wall. Like you're on the war path, you're this close to getting that first three plate bench press, and then all of a sudden, nothing. No progress, shit starts to hurt. Every time you go to the gym, everything's slow and grindy and you just get frustrated. You don't start making good decisions. You get emotional, you get reactive. You take your ball and go home. You skip your accessory work. You call your ex-girlfriend, the crazy one. In those trying times, you need something to keep you honest. You need a flashlight for that dark tunnel you're in, and that's what Base Strength AI is. It doesn't just give you my templates, which are pretty damn good by themselves. It makes changes for the block, the week, the day, the second in the workout based on your feedback. Any of you with an online coach know what it's like. You're looking at the Excel sheet, and you're just hoping it's not the exact same thing he sends to all of his other clients. You get stuck in the workout. You text him, hey, what do I do? 
and you might hear back in the next three to seven business days. Online coaches can't give you this level of personalization in real time, and it's a tenth of the cost. So get unstuck, make this the year you hit those numbers that you know you're capable of hitting. Hit the link below, go to basestrength.com, check out Base Strength AI. The first thing we gotta do is gauge your strength, specifically your strength to weight ratio. You can hop up on a bar and dangle and strain and try to move yourself a couple of inches, but that's not gonna tell you if you're five pounds away from a pull-up or if you're 100. In my opinion, one of the best proxies is a bent over barbell row. You want to be strict. You want to be completely bent over. We're not talking about Yates row bullshit where you're standing almost vertically, moving it three inches to the bottom of your belly button. I mean, pitched over back flat like a table. I want to be able to set a mug of hot cocoa on your shoulder blades and have you not spill a drop. And I want you to pull the bar as strictly as you can without moving your body whatsoever until the bar touches the very bottom of your sternum. That is your standard for the bent row and how close you are to your body weight is going to tell you how far away you are from a pull-up. Now a bent row is a stronger movement. You're gonna be able to handle more weight and do more reps because you're using more musculature through a stronger range of motion. That's also why it's a better developer for your upper back. Now this isn't a pure conversion, but to give you something to shoot for, I recommend being able to do your body weight on a bent over barbell row for at least five clean, strict reps before you even consider trying to get up on a pull-up bar and see what you can do. By the time you can do your body weight for 10 strict reps, you're probably good enough to get on the bar and actually start using pull-ups as a developmental exercise to start clock and work. Now, number two is variety. One of the limits of pull-up regressions and banded shit is that it's just way too specific. I understand that pull-ups are your goal, but when you're starting out, when you're too weak to do basic body weight movements, the idea is that you need a general base. You don't need specificity the way an elite athlete does. You need more basic ability, more mass, more general strength, more exposure to different things. It's really only when you're very advanced that you have to focus on pure specialization. When you're new, when you're untrained, more things give you the right answer and they do so faster. So instead of limiting yourself to one movement, one plane of movement, instead using a variety of movements is going to give you a generally more well-rounded, more developed upper back that's going to make you bigger and stronger much faster. So I like bent rows as a staple and you can get pretty good just doing bent rows, but the more movements you put in, the faster that growth is gonna happen and you wanna be in the habit of pulling from different angles. So mixing bent rows with things like hammer strength or machine rows from different heights, doing pull downs, doing dumbbell rows. These are all great movements that are gonna hit the musculature of your upper back in a different way and increase your potential for strength later on down the road. Number three is the structure of your training. If doing a pull-up is a primary concern for you, that means you're doing back work multiple times per week. You're not just doing the once a week sometimes that many power lifters do where they put it kind of on the back burner, like after they bench or maybe they forget about it or skip it, you're putting back work front and center, you're doing it two, two, three times a week with a lot of effort and a good amount of volume and you're aiming to improve on that, meaning you're working up to more effort, to more volume, eventually adding sets, eventually adding exercises as you adapt to keep progress going. For somebody starting out, I think two exercises in a workout done at least twice per week with a minimum of three working sets, three hard sets close to failure, on each one, that's a pretty good starting point. As you progress, you're gonna find that you don't really get sore, it doesn't mess you up, it's kind of easy, and that's when you wanna look at making increases weeks or months down the line. You can look at moving up to five working sets, or you can look to adding a third day, or you can look to doing an extra exercise. I usually recommend that people start their programs with as much effort as they can over a few sets and few exercises, and then work on progressing the amount of work. Number four is the progression you're going to use with this structure. So you have a good idea of exercises, you have your split, but now you need to know the sets and reps and how you're going to build up over time. Now for strength, we need to get into the strength range. I think five should be the floor. That should be as low as you go because you get pretty good strength adaptations from that. The problem with going below that especially with new lifters, is they don't clock enough volume there. It's not enough work. And this is one of the problems with doing things like pull-up regressions, because if you're doing controlled negatives, if you're doing really hard efforts with bands, you're trying to get close to a pull-up and you're only doing one, two or three reps, it's not that much stimulus. And you have to do a shit ton of sets to really make up for the lack of total reps that you're doing. Early on, you're gonna get a much faster response if you are using 
at least five repetitions, and that's a pretty good carryover to strength as well. Now the back also tends to grow like crazy from more reps. So I recommend your heaviest movement come first. That's what you're using for five reps or so. And then your second and maybe third movements, that's where you're going eight, 10, 12 reps, even branching up to 15 to really cook your lats, get some blood into those muscles, get some metabolic fatigue because conditioning is also part of this. The more conditioned you are, the more volume you can handle, the more sets you can experience before performance drops off. So all of this feeds into each other. It's in your best interest to be conditioned. It's in your best interest to adapt to reps, to volume and to intensity and to effort. These are a couple of progressions I like. You just start week one. It might be kind of easy, but it gives you a ramp so that every time you come back to those same exercises, you can add a little bit more. You give yourself a little more work to adapt to. And before you know it, you're really having to strain to keep up. And that's where the really rapid growth is going to come from. A couple of months go by, you're firing on all cylinders. Your back is thicker, it's stronger, your arms are bigger, and you hop up on the pull-up bar and holy shit, all of a sudden, my body weight is not some monumental obstacle that I can't physically maneuver. It's a great feeling. Now thing number five is volume. This is baked into the progression just by adding weight, trying to do more, you are going to get better and volume will go up along with that. But like I mentioned earlier with structure, you do want to make a conscious decision to adapt to more total work. This is something that people really forget about. Some people convince themselves it's not useful, it's not important, it's not optimal. This is one of the best dials you have to turn when it comes to getting good at something very quickly. A typical bodybuilding program, you have too many muscles, too many things going on. People don't like to focus on one thing ahead of everything else. So you end up kind of having this leveling out effect where the volume on any one given thing never really gets too high. Bodybuilders go through phases where they're trying to bring up a weak point or focus on one area and they will double the amount of work that they do on that area while keeping everything else at baseline. And it's no different for this. If this is a priority for you, if it's something you want to do sooner rather than later, put this front and center, start increasing the amount of work that you are capable of hanging with, and you'll be just blown away by how quickly your body responds to that. So use this to go out, get a barn door back, improve your pull-up ability in the process. When people talk about calisthenic athletes in their backs, I want you to be able to turn around and be like, yeah, check this out. When you put on a trench coat, you should look like a ninja turtle wearing a trench coat. So check out Base Strength AI, support the channel by supporting those who support us. Go to barbellapparel.com, grab your Big Dreams Bad Jeans tea and other Bromley merch. Thanks so much for watching guys. Till next time, this is Bromley, I'll see ya.